I am tired of seeing boring, plain, dull, generic, unoriginal shorts while scrolling on YouTube. I want to see some spicy, high quality, professional, and cinematic Rocket League edits. Just like Lidipi used to do back in the day. Just like Jazer's edits. You know, I want to see high quality shit. So I'm going to show you how to install Reshade today. This is going to take your game to the next level in terms of beautification. You can turn Reshade on while you're playing the game to make it look more pretty. So even if you want to take clips from your stream, from your videos, and post those on YouTube, they're still going to look great. You can turn it on while you're in your saved replays so that you can get those beautiful cinematic edits. This is going to take two minutes. It's easy peasy, all right? Listen up. All right, it's easy peasy. Go to Opera GX. It's the best browser. Look up Reshade. Close your word of the day tab because you're an industrious, studious individual learning new words every single day. Click on Reshade. If you want the link, it's reshade.me. Big purple download button right in the middle. Click download. It's going to take you to this page. You're going to scroll down to the bottom. If it didn't make you scroll down to the bottom. Super easy peasy. Click on download Reshade 6.4.1. You don't want the full add-on support. That's intended for single player games. It can get you banned in multiplayer games. I don't know why. I don't make the rules. That's just what it says. Install it. All right, once it's downloaded, go to wherever it's downloaded. Double click on it. It's going to open up a window that looks just like this. What you need to do is pick the game that you want to install it in. Look, you can even get this on Fortnite, all right? But look, you're going to go down until you find Rocket League, all right? Click Next. Select the rendering API that Rocket League uses. If you don't know, just go with the one that it thinks it is. It's probably right. If you do know, you already know what you're doing. Click Next. An existing reshade installation was found for the target game because I already have this installed. This isn't going to pop up for you, it should just install. This is also how you can uninstall Reshade once you get it going. I'm going to actually go ahead and update my Reshade. Bam, it's done. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm going to open up Rocket League. Alright, once Rocket League's open, you'll probably see this bar at the top that says the Reshade version. And it says it's going to compile all the effects, all that sort of stuff. Now it's going to tell you right at the top, it says press home to open the Reshade overlay. So if you go ahead and press home, by the way, the new versions of Reshade, they're not really, they're not incompatible with Bacchus Mod like they used to be. So if you have Bacchus Mod already installed, you don't got to worry about a thing. Now, as you can see here, there's going to be a shitload of effects. It's probably going to be really confusing for you at first, but don't worry, you'll get the hang of it really quick. I'm going to show you a few effects that I use all the time so you can kind of get a feel for how this thing works. So first of all, I'm going to load into a replay. All right, so right away, I'm going to take us out of here. I'm going to take us out of here. I'm going to put it in fly and none just so we can find some sort of cinematic shot. Let's find a nice cinematic shot here. All right, let's call this our shot. All right, this isn't the most beautiful uh, scene or shot in the world, but I'm just going to show you guys a few effects so you can get a feel for this. First of all, you can drag this around, right? I'm going to leave it over here for right now because I actually want to see the car and I want to see the background. One of the effects that I use the most often, if I just go to, and you can see I've got a few different presets here, right? Which is cool. Now, this is one that I use all the time, most of the time for my clips and my edits. So, so something I use even when I'm playing the game is SMAA and FXAA. It kind of smooths out some edges, makes the game just look a little bit smoother. Next up, I use Light EOF FAR. So you can see already that this kind of blurs the background a little bit, but you can change this in the settings down here by adjusting the bokeh width so we can blur it out a little more. And that's pretty good for an editor for a screenshot right there, 6.812. You can also change the amount of depth of field, which is similar to the bokeh width, but also not. The bokeh width, even if it's zero, there's still going to be depth of field. Or even if it's one, there's still going to be depth of field. But it's going to be more blurred the more you put it up. So I'm going to leave it around, you know, I think I'll leave it at seven there. And I'm going to leave the amount up at 10. There's plenty of different options in here. What I do is I don't use autofocus. Autofocus sucks, all right? I use manual focus. And then you can change the distance in the manual focus. So right now I've got it at 0.166. If I take it down to zero, pretty much everything's going to be blurred out. Even the front of this car is going to be blurred out. Because the way that Reshade works is it uses a depth map. If I undo it all the way, nothing's going to be blurred out because it's going to be saying that even those objects in the very back, you know, it's, it's a manual depth of field here. So I'm going to take it back to about one point. I'm going to leave it at 1.6. Next up, I use a lot of ambient light. And you can see what this is doing. Some of you might think it looks better without it. Some of you might think it looks better with it. That's the fun of reshade is you get to experiment and figure all this sort of stuff out for yourself. It actually does look pretty slick with it off. Yeah, you just got to figure out what kind of effect you're going for here. I'm going to leave it on. You can see an ambient light. It's got their own settings to, to talk about. Whatever. 
Something else I use is HDR. If, you, if your graphics card doesn't support an HDR, this is awesome because you can make it look like it does when you go to post it. And you can see that makes the darks darker, it makes the whites whiter, makes the colors more color. Same thing with colorfulness. I use colorfulness all the time. So I've got my <laughs> default, my default preset. This is the preset I normally use when I'm making edits, depending on the map that I'm on. And you can see right away, I've got a lot of effects going on here, right? If I turn them all off, this is what Rocket League looks like. It really does not look that good. You guys won't notice a difference when you turn on motion blur, but if you're recording, motion blur is a lot more cinematic than not having it on if you're recording like an actual video clip. So I leave it plugged in because I'm always, it, it, it doesn't hurt to have it on. The next thing I turn on is filmic pass. And you can notice right away that filmic pass kind of increases that contrast as well as it reduces the saturation a little bit, but I don't know, in a very cinematic way, it's hard to describe. After filming pass, I turn on fake HDR, right? I use fake HDR because even though my GPU supports high dynamic range and my monitor does, I don't really understand it, so I just leave it off. But it's got a fake one, so I just turn that off. Colorfulness, this pretty much does exactly what you expect it to. It brings some of the saturation back that filmic pass takes away. SMAA and FXAA kind of smooth out some of the sharp edges and shitty anti-aliasing that Rocket League does just to make it a little bit less jarring on your eyes. Now this one I use no matter what preset is on, I'm pretty much always using this, light DOF underscore far. There are settings within all of these presets as well that you can change around. So for example, on light depth of field far here, I've changed my bokeh width to be seven and I've changed the uh, depth of field amount to be max i want the max amount of depth of field and i want it at a width of seven so i don't want it too crazy like that um and i don't want it non-existent at one seven is perfect for me ambient light adds a little bit of ambient light and bloom i really like using this one it just kind of adds a little bit more life to the photo or to the clip adaptive fog is also really big i like using this one because you can actually change the color of the fog in the background you can see it adds some brightness to the end to the back over there but with adaptive fog, you can also change the color of the fog. So right now, I'll just copy this code so I can save it, because this is what I like using. But I could also make the scene even a little bit warmer by doing something like this. I could just make it brighter, could make it black. I could bring it down and even make it green because um, the octane here is green. Maybe not that green, somewhere around there. The opportunities and the possibilities are really endless here. I'm gonna leave it at the original color. I really like it. You also can change the max fog factor, fog curve, where the fog starts, all these sorts of things. You can copy my settings here if you want to uh, for this whole preset. I use emphasize and emphasize really just, it messes with the focus a little bit and emphasizes, I think the center of the screen. You can see right here, it kind of pulls, I don't know, pulls some color out. I like having it on. Same with depth haze. Depth haze is almost like adaptive fog. If I turn these all off, you can see depth haze. It adds haze in the depth, pretty um, axiomatic. That's a new word for me. Learned that the other day. Now, Magic Bloom kind of increases the brightness and bloom of the entire picture. Adaptive Sharpen really sharpens the image, but I don't actually like image sharpness because I think it's jarring on the eye and it makes it look more like a video game. It's like when you turn on sharpness in a game like this that already doesn't have, you know, great graphics, it's not a realistic... I don't know, man. I just... I like a little bit more uh, smoothed out. Although shar Adaptive Sharpen can make it look higher resolution for clips. Mm. Like if you look at the ball in the background, now with adaptive sharpen on versus with it off, it's just a little cleaner, it's sharper. All right, there's loads of other things that you can do in here. Color grading, color lab, color matrix, auto exposure, bloom, like it's really quite endless. Film grain, Gaussian blur, feathers, sharp edges. It does make it look quite cinematic. I'm actually just gonna turn on Gaussian blur, I kinda like it, but it's got presets like this as well. So you can have a sketch, sketch outline, better shading, which is actually really nice. I'm going to turn that on. Screen space, ambience, occlusion does not work well with the other things that I'm using here. All right, let me scroll all the way back up to the top. Now, the order of your effects actually does matter. You can see if I move colorfulness uh, from underneath HDR to right to the top, it changes. If I move it to the bottom, it changes. When I move it to the top, things are a little bit darker. When I move it underneath HDR, it maintains the brightness. So pay attention to that as well. And yeah, so this is the preset that uh, I'm going to be using. And I'm going to leave the Gaussian blur on and the shading, actually. Anyways, so that's how you can take something that looks like this. 
and turn it into something that looks like this. That's how you install and use Reshade. Thank you guys so much for watching. That looks fucking dope. Oh, Reshade doesn't look great in menus. Just by the way, it'll make your menus look weird. So I normally will just switch it. I create a preset that's called none, and then there's nothing on for just when I'm navigating menus. All right, that's how you install Reshade. If you have any questions, comments, complaints, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. I really appreciate any feedback on the videos. I'm trying to do a good job for you guys. All right, guys, it's that simple. Thank you so much for watching. Now you have Reshade installed. Go in there, get creative. Maybe tag me in any photos or clips that you post using Reshade. I would absolutely love to see them. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope this helped you. Don't forget, we're still under that 1,000 subscribers. We're at 835 right now. So the day one OG supporter hoodies are still live. You can get them at cocreates.square.site. I'll leave a link in the description. And as always, I do have to give a huge shout out to all of our channel members who are keeping this thing going, keeping me on the rails, helping me pay for things to basically just increase the quality that you guys get to see on your screens, keep the channel going, and to keep my spirits up. Honestly, I wouldn't be doing this without you guys. So I really appreciate each and every single one of you. In no particular order, I'm now going to list them all off in order to give them a shout out because they deserve a shout out. So let's get it done. Audrey, wrists. Down RL, Melissa Howard, Jocelyn Freeman, Northern Nomad, Damon Scott, Where's Johnny, TNT Josh, Maddie, Jude Howard, Flair, Mystic Liam, Zach RL, Oh Well, Sav Practical, the one and only James, and of course to all of our lovely donators who donate throughout the stream, and Flair even donating on the shorts. Thank you guys so much. It really means the world to me to have support from you all.